What's up guys, I'm Dave Klein. I wanted to make a video talking about the general story of Dark Souls 2 and clearing up some questions that I get. I think it goes without saying that there will be massive spoilers in this video, and I don't recommend watching until you've completed the game. I'll also be referencing Dark Souls 1. You've been warned. So, let's get started. You who link the fire. You who bear the curse. Once the fire is linked, souls will flourish anew, and all of this will play out again. It is your choice to embrace or renounce this. In the end of Dark Souls 1, players are given a choice to link the fire or not. Regardless of which choice the character makes, at the time of Dark Souls 2, it's safe to say that someone, be it the chosen undead from Dark Souls 1, or another hero at some point, has linked the fire. They say these are the remains of a saint who cast himself into the bonfire, but we will never know for sure, for soot and ashes tell no story. Once this happens, everything that happened before plays out again, a cursed cycle, history doomed to repeat itself over and over again. Strait of Olaphus informs us, Many kingdoms rose and fell on this tract of earth. Mine was by no means the first. Anything that has a beginning also has an end. No flame, however brilliant, does not one day splutter and fade. But then, from the ashes, the flame reignites and a new kingdom is born, sporting a new face. It is all a curse. <laughs> and it is your cursed flesh that will inherit the flame. <laughs> One such kingdom that resided where Drangleic once did was Olaphus, but, like all kingdoms before, it has fallen by the time of Dark Souls 2, likely during another cycle. Once the fire is linked, souls will flourish anew, and all of this will play out again. When a powerful undead links the flame, it causes this rebirth, and the cycle continues. Great and powerful souls fly, reborn, and inhabit new bodies. We see this through the major bosses of Dark Souls 2. During the Lost Sinner fight, you'll see a familiar creature. One that looks just like the Witch of Izalith from Dark Souls 1. For defeating the Lost Sinner in New Game Plus, you'll receive the Old Witch Soul, which you can trade at Ornifex for the Chaos Blade. For defeating the Old Iron King, you'll receive the Old King Soul. For the Duke's Dear Freya, the Old Pale Drake Soul and for the Rotten, the Old Dead One soul. The implication being that many of the great souls from Dark Souls 1 have been reborn and spread into new beings. Those beings then pick up similar properties as their former selves. In Dark Souls 1, the Witch of Islet created the Chaos Flame and thus all demons in its wake. Quelana, her daughter, views this as a sin and something to atone for. We see the Lost Sinner eternally punishes herself for the sins of her past. Her sword tells us, its blade saps the life of its wielder. The true nature of this sword is unknown, even to the lost sinner herself. Those who choose this sword will share the lost sinner's misdeeds. While it's possible she's atoning for her sins of the Witch of Izalith, as her penal set tells us, the tattered skirt is worn and shamed by the guilty, by now no one knows who this was used to punish or for what reason, I actually don't think this is the case. I think this character, like the Witch of Izalith, has sinned in some great way, but is atoning for some new great sin. The lost sinner lives deep within the Bastille. The fool! trying to light the first flame. While the Witch of Izalith attempted to duplicate the first flame, it seems the Lost Sinner tried to light the first flame. The actions of the other Old Ones speak onto the same theme of being related to the Great Lords of the past, but not exactly the same. The soul of the Old Dead One, or Nido from Dark Souls 1, has been reborn into the Rotten, who takes on similar properties, like Nido, who is comprised of what he watched over, the dead, the rotten is comprised of what he watches, the undead and forgotten. He has turned the Black Gulch into his domain and embraces all in his sanctuary for all things unwanted or tossed away. 
the Iron King who held undead hunts during his reign, and in the heyday of his land, fancied entertaining dubious and eccentric guests from faraway lands, also carries a great soul, his being the old king's soul. It reminds me of someone who lived long ago. A vainglorious liar who ended up hurling himself into the flames. Now he's Icarus Earth, if I'm not mistaken. For trading the Old King's soul to Ornifex, you'll receive the Dragon Slayer Great Bow, and for trading the Old King's soul to Strayed, you can receive the Miracle Blinding Bolt, crafted in ancient times by the God of Sun, but later forbidden by the same deity. Was it to protect the world from hatred or sorrow? The implication being the Old King is supposed to represent Gwyn, Lord of Sunlight and Cinder. And finally, we have the Duke's dear Freya, whose soul is associated with the old Pale Drake soul. Trading this soul to Ornifex will net you the Moonlight Greatsword. The blade of this greatsword shines like the brilliant rays of the moon. In the oldest legends rarely spoken today, it is said the sword was born of a great white being. Oh, it's like that awful traitor long ago. He coveted what he did not have, and it drove him mad. What a curious conundrum. <laughs> the clear implication being this is Seath. All of these great souls are described as souls of the ineffable. The once magnificent soul continues to exert influence over the land, even after the eons have reduced it to these remnants. Once the fire is linked, souls will flourish anew, and all of this will play out again. Gwyn, Seath, Nido, and the Witch of Isleth can all be accounted for, as well as Ornstein. His soul seems to be reborn in the old Dragon Slayer, who inherits his old Leo Ring. Now, the most important of these souls is the soul of Nashandra. Nashandra was born of the dark with an insatiable lust for strength. Use the special soul of this prisoner of desire to acquire numerous souls. She is the old one of the Abyss, who was reborn in death split into minuscule fragments and spread across the land. The tiniest of these pieces, precisely due to its size, was the first to restore its form. The pieces began to coalesce once again, becoming human in shape. This soul, reborn, is the soul of Manus, and has a vital role in shaping the land of Drangleic. Nashandra was the smallest of pieces, which sensing its own fragility yearned for what it lacked. This yearning seemed to be for power and strength. The soul manifested itself into Nashandra and the woman who would become the Queen of Drangleic. What makes a king? Some say that it is birthright, while others call it destiny. Perhaps it is not important, as long as the king's name serves to unite his people. King Vendrick rose to power in the land of Drangleic before it was known as such. He fought with the warriors prepared to die for him, whom he granted royal soldier rings. These were granted to warriors who distinguished themselves in the service of King Vendrick. The king favored simple warriors who staked their every battle on strength alone. He also utilized dragon riders. These dragon riders were King Vendrick's royal guard. According to legend, the dragon riders straddled not horses, but worms. Together with the king, they crushed its former inhabitants and erected a magnificent kingdom upon their graves. There to help Vendrick gain power over Drangleic was his brother, Aldia. They say that Lord Aldia was the king's elder brother and helped found Drangleic, but he later lost interest in the land's fortunes. Aldia was known for his experiments, and it's quite possible that the worms the dragon riders rode on were actually creations of Aldia's, for Aldia liked to experiment on various creatures. The mysterious Lord Aldia secluded himself inside a manor to conduct various experiments. Those invited to the manor disappeared, replaced over time with malformed beasts that roamed its halls. While his halls are filled with mutated creatures found throughout the game, beyond the manor lies the Guardian Dragon as well as the Dragon Airy. King Vendrick was loved by his subjects, but something happened. Something that would change him. A curse spread throughout the land one that desperately frightened him, and one that he would be inflicted with himself. The curse of the undead. King Vendrick tried everything to rid himself of that which he feared. Long ago, the dungeons overflowed with the accursed, and the king commanded a contorted sentry to deliver those who had no cells to a faraway land, and to make certain they were never heard from again. 
He tried to put the undead out of sight and out of mind, sending them far away to the Lost Bastille. He hired mad warriors from foreign lands as well as Shadow Knights from Mira to counter the undead. In an attempt to stave off the curse, King Vendrick hired Shadow Men to put down the Hollows, but before long they were hollowed themselves. I believe it likely the Pursuer was also a creation of King Vendrick's, for the Pursuer hunts down those branded by the curse, as if each undead soul that he claims will atone for his sins. At some point, King Vendrick met his queen, Nashandra. It seems it was Nashandra's doing that caused him, in a desperate measure, to cross the sea and invade the land of the giants. Soon, the giants will descend upon this fort. It is revenge for the kingdom's misguided barbarism. The venerable lord built this kingdom to bring prosperity to his subjects. What has transformed him so, I cannot imagine. I believe Nishandra tempted the king to steal a prize from the giants, a great and wondrous soul that would help him temporarily cure him of his curse. A powerful soul is like a curse, and Vendrick, king of Drenglick, used a powerful soul to keep the curse at bay. King Vendrick sought greater souls and made the giant strength his own, but even still, the curse overcame him. Long ago, the king crossed the seas, pillaged the land of giants, and brought back a prize. It was then that the golems materialized. Drang Lake's been a pile of rubble since the war, thought long, long ago. When the giants crossed the sea. Seemed like the battles would never end. Poor folk like myself have nary a place to sleep. The giants came to Drang Lake with a vengeance. The giants landed on the northern shores and set siege to King Vendrick's castle to claim an invaluable prize. King Vendrick sent his best men to fight off the giants, but they were woefully unprepared. King Vendrick supplied his bravest men with the best armor available to face the great giants, but very few returned alive. Sir Sion was widely known as the kingdom's most lethal knight, and when the giants invaded, he volunteered to lead the advance party, but was slaughtered most dishonorably. The king commissioned replicas of Sion's accoutrements, and bestowed them to promising knights, but not long after they donned the armor did they go thoroughly mad. For multiple generations, the giants laid siege upon Drangleic. My father and his father both fought the giants on this very land. The giants have wills of steel. They cannot find it within themselves to forgive the misdeeds of our lord. Not only did Captain Drummond fight against the giants, but so too did his family. Captain Drummond's ancestors have served Drangleic for generations, principally as defenders of the Great Fort, but Captain Drummond is the last in this proud line. In his day, King Vendrick was fair and just, and expected the same of his liegemen. This helm was proof of King Vendrick's trust and honor until his transfiguration. And with the cursed undead traveling into the memories of the giants, the giants were eventually defeated by an unnamed hero, but alas, victory came all too late. Even beyond death, the giants were still enraged at King Vendrick. Will the giants' resentment for the king be pacified in death, or only emboldened? It would seem their resentment was emboldened, for the more giant souls the player acquires, the more they can damage King Vendrick. While the land was enveloped in war, King Vendrick and his brother, Lord Aldia, eventually had a falling out. Though King Vendrick wanted to do nothing but seal away the undead curse, his brother Aldia was obsessed with discovering its cause. The peculiar figure known as Lord Aldia attempted to uncover the secrets of life itself, and viewed the undead as a key to this mystery. King Vendrick condemned his own elder brother to the mansion. They both sought the truth, but through different means, and their fervor meant the eventual withering of their familial ties. Aldia conducted horrific experiments. To imagine what unspeakable deeds were performed to create the northern and southern ritual bands, one need only recall the cruel fate of the residents of Aldia. He invited acolytes and sages to help him in his work. Several of the greatest minds converged in Aldia to weave strange new rituals, but rumors suggest that during the course of their work, their thoughts were not their own. 
He utilized the Giants in Dranglick, and the peculiar figure known as Lord Aldia kept Giants in his manor and attempted to recreate a dragon, but after some time, was not heard from again. In fact, one such creation of his was the Ancient Dragon. You'll find a great creature far to the east. A colossal thing with the strength to match its size. Or something playing the part at least. Brave undead. What did that dragon tell you? That thing is a prop. A false deity. Don't be fooled, my undead. In the far eastern outskirts of Drangleic lies an old manor that is now long forgotten, as it should be, for the things that lurk there are better left unknown. It seems Aldia succeeded in creating dragons. We also know that the ancient dragon was, in fact, created using a giant soul, for after defeating the ancient dragon it drops just that, indicating it isn't a true dragon. Lord Aldia disappeared at one point, and it's also very possible, and note, this is a speculation, that the ancient dragon is Lord Aldia transformed. Regardless, in his toils and attempts at creating dragons, Lord Aldia also created Shanalot, or the Emerald Herald. My name is Shanalot. The dragon gave me this name, for I was born with none. I was born of dragons, contrived by men, by ones who would cousin fate herself. They are the ones who created me. Lord Aldia attempted to create Shanalot in order to counter the curse. But they failed. I did not come out as intended. Fate would not be bested, and men were cursed once again. They say that she is the last Firekeeper, but they say a lot of things. That she's a gentle shepherd, lighting the way for you cursed fools. Nonsense. Despite their falling out, King Vendrick did utilize his brother's research. His Looking Glass Knight uses the King's Mirror, a looking glass at the castle that is said to have been a passage to another world. We find multiple looking glasses in Aldia's manor, indicating this was something he actually created. Additionally, the mastodons that guard Drangleic Castle were experiments of Aldia's. Whatever was created by Lord Aldia was lost with his disappearance, but the king attempted to revive these things, even if only fragments remained. King Vendrick utilized his brother's techniques and restored a forbidden long-lost art to create these inhuman abominations. Eventually, the king grew steadily more hollow. While it's not implicitly said, I believe it's possible he began to realize Nashandra's intentions, her want to keep the world in dark. If you proceed, Nashandra will come after you. Knowing that you will take the throne and link the fire. She covets the first flame and the great soul. Fearing something wicked, the king fled the castle and never returned. But his warrior, forever true to his command, stands ready to expunge those who would challenge him. King Vendrick fled to the undead crypt with his trusty royal Aegis, Velstat. The great king shut himself away and was soon reduced to a mere shell. Just what was it he yearned to protect? Here he remained in the undead crypt, where he withered away and hollowed out. The king was wasted away, a shadow of his former self, but still held something dear. The dear item that he protected and clutched onto being his king's ring. The king's ring is of vital importance, as it allows passage to Aldia's manor, where the ashen mist heart resides. The king's ring allows access to Jay, a fallen giant whose memories contain the giant's kinship, a necessary item for reaching the throne of want. And finally, the King's Ring allows passage to the Throne of Want itself. So why flee to the Undead Crypt? It seems King Vendrick was trying to keep all of this away from Nashandra. His image of her painted in Dranglet Castle curses all who come near, and only the King knows whether the depiction of the Queen is of resentful mockery or an affectionate exaltation. In order to reach the Undead Crypt, first visitors must fight his guard, the Looking Glass Knight, in order to gain passage to the Shrine of Amana. In the Shrine of Amana resides the Milfinito, 
And I have to give props to my buddy and fellow Dark Souls uploader, Terra Mantis, for pointing the following out to me. When we sing, the little ones dance. The little ones grant comfort to those who bear death and dark. This is what we were taught. While the Milf and Nito are singing, none of the cursed frog-like creatures will attack the player, but they will aggro against the player once the Milf and Nito stops singing. It's possible Nishandra, a being whose very essence is the dark, cannot pass through the Shrine of Amana, as the song would affect her. We find a captured Milfinito in Dranglea Castle, locked away, and I believe it likely Nishandra captured her in order to discover a way into the shrine. Nishandra ends up waiting, and sending any undead who approach her on various tasks in order to open the way to the Throne of Want. She bides her time, waiting for someone to clear the way for her, find the giant's kinship, and kill the Throne Watcher and Defender who protect the Throne of Want from one like her. Brave undead. You have proven yourself to me. Now, be one with the dark. And here is where your tale as the Cursed Undead begins. Alright guys, that wraps up the story of Dark Souls 2. There are still mysteries to be solved in other storylines, but I hope you enjoyed my take on what happened in Dranglaic. If you have any other interpretations, I'd love to hear, as this is still early on, and as a community we're still discovering new details about the game. For another great video on the story of Dark Souls 2, I highly recommend checking out Rachel, aka Quaylog's video on the story, as she does a fantastic job explaining what happened. And for more lore, you can check out my location guide videos on the surrounding lands of Dranglaic. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Peace.